Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig, and in today's update video, we're going to be looking at Game Maker version 22.5. Now, this version just released today, or depending on what day it is, it might actually be before, because when I updated Game Maker, I had to go in and manually do that myself. So I think it's going to be pushed out today or tomorrow. You should be getting it shortly. But this version is pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at this. We've got time sources being added in. Now, time sources is an entire new way to run essentially your own alarms in Game Maker from anywhere. You no longer have to use an object. You can actually run them at the beginning of the game and you can customize how often they run, what they do, when they stop, pausing them, all of that. So Gupri from Opera and Game Maker have a video right here on this update page how to use them. He goes through the syntax and kind of setting up his own alarm that runs every second indefinitely. Now he does this because, well, he's a really great teacher. I've been working with him and he's awesome. But I also don't think the manual is quite updated yet. Because if I go into this and I click F1, there's nothing here. And even if I search time source, there's nothing found. So I'm a little worried that it's not quite in the manual yet. So this video and the stuff I'm going to put out is probably going to be the only stuff you can find. So keep up to date on that. It's going to be much more prevalent. I see time sources becoming extremely useful. You can actually now create your own events outside of objects. So we're getting even more and more into the territory of Game Maker is less object and asset oriented to where you can do whatever you want. So what's really cool is this time source isn't just an alarm. You can actually have it based on seconds or frames in your game. That means if your game is struggling and you want something to happen after a certain number of frames or after a certain real amount of time has passed, you now have the option of doing either one of those, which is very, very powerful. It's really cool. I'm going to dive more into this in a future video, so stay tuned on that. There's a upgrade from .NET 4.5 to .NET 6, which is really behind the scenes, but it's also a pretty big deal. It is a significant upgrade, and it should run faster all around when you're doing uh, compiling times, when you're just using Game Maker. This is a big quality of life upgrade that is just going to get glossed over by almost everybody. Then we have a really cool feature, which they are integrating more structs into everything here, which is pre-creating values on instances. Now, what that means is you can actually pass in a struct with values so that when you create an instance, it immediately already has those. So before, whenever we created something, let's say we went down here and we called instance create layer, what we'd have to do is save that as some kind of variable like bad guy and then we would create it and the create event would run first and then we'd go in and we'd say something like bad guy dot and we'd set these properties inside of there now you could make that work it was a little hacky because if you had something in the create event that you wanted to have a value that would run immediately it wouldn't work there was no way to get around it because you couldn't pass in values that the object would have or the instance would have before it actually got created but now we can which is awesome. So let's say we want to create it X and Y on instances and we'll just create OBJ bad guy, whatever. I don't actually have the object in here yet, but now we have an optional argument that is a var struct. So to use a struct, you've got to open it up like this and then you'll want to come and close this and it's going to look a little funky. And then we need to pass in some values here. Now, this is a struct. It is, it is different than an object. So the way we actually assign anything inside of here, we can say something like vSpeed colon is equal to negative 10. So we use a colon, and that's how we assign things inside of here. So this is actually going to create for us the bad guy, and it's going to immediately assign the vSpeed. And you can assign your own variables here as well. That way you no longer have to save this and then do something with it after with some kind of hacky method, running an alarm on after one frame or something like that. This is really, really powerful and really cool. They've also combined that 
with the ability to have constructors as objects. So this, this now is kind of working together. So if we have a constructor like bullet, we have a function bullet that is a constructor. And if you wanna learn more about constructors, uh, they go along with scripts. I actually did a webinar for YoYo on that. It's on their official channel, check it out. It was really cool. You can have something like this, and now you can actually pass in that constructor here because a constructor is just a struct. So that means that you've got structs, constructors, and you can instance create things with those inside of there. Now this is also on instance create depth. Both of these functions now work. So that is really, really cool. There, the, the power with that and time sources almost allows you to completely create your own game outside of an object. That'd be a fun challenge. Keep that in mind. Uh, they have an update for this, but this is only in the beta, so we're not going to talk about that. The sound inspector is now added, so we have a little bit more inside of there. So if we open up Game Maker, and I think I've got my inspector right here. If I click on a sound, we now have a waveform inspector over here, which is pretty cool. That's about all it does. It's nothing too big. And you can change everything inside of there, like the everything else to the inspector. The other cool thing that they're starting to roll out now, though, which is really neat, is this blowing leaves effect. Now, an effect is different than a filter. And everything that they've been putting out so far has actually been filters inside of the room. I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I can run my game. But if we have an effect layer, or if we wanted to do something like this with uh, on a specific layer, we can do that, and we can add this in here as well if we wanted to. I'm not going to because that's going to be a little too crazy. But in the room editor, we have the filters and effects layer. Now, up until this point, everything has been a filter, which is actually just a shader. And I just did a webinar on that as well. So these are all shaders up until this one. This is actually an effect. So it's a shader combined with objects that are being managed by GameMaker in the background, which is why we can't see this in the room editor right now. If we were to do something like a color tint, we can actually see this inside of our room, uh, depending on if we have anything inside of there, we can. But when we have the, let's go, oh yeah. So here's like the white noise. We can see this running right now. It's actually in our game and we can see it before we run it. But if we add the windblown particles, we can't see this because there's objects. There's actually objects being managed. Now, this is just the first of many that they're working on, and this is kind of what it does. And that is my timer that I've got running in the background. I will not start that. So this is really, really cool. Now you've got effects in Game Maker, pre-generated, but with an absolute ton of things that you can customize inside of here. So you can change all of these features, which is a lot. So all of this right here is customizable through the GUI. I imagine you're also gonna be able to customize it through code, although I haven't seen it yet. But you can also go and change the sprite. Now I don't have any other sprites in here, so let's, let's go ahead and create something hideous that we can have fly around our room. So edit image, uh, here we go. A blue dot or a blue squiggly line. So we go in here. This is now it's actually going to fly around our room because we can customize it. And that does look absolutely hideous. But this is really, really cool stuff. This is one of many effects that are gonna be coming out. And I am so excited for this. Uh, the amount of control that we have over this effect layer is just incredible. There's so much that we can do with this, and this is just the beginning. So if you needed something like a windblown anything, snow, leaves, grass, uh, blue squiggly lines, you've now got it in your game, which is fabulous. And that's everything that they're updating for this one. So this is 22.5. It's a May update. It's right at the end of May, but we got it. I'm excited for it, and it's going to be awesome. Let me know what you are most excited for. So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of new updates that are actually gonna change the way we work with things. I think that the instance create 
having a struct inside of there and these time sources is going to be huge. Uh, I need to learn all about it because there's so much possibility there. But what are you most excited for? Let me know. I want to hear about it in the comments below. If you are interested in learning more about Game Maker from a coding perspective and building up your knowledge and how to make games from scratch, check out my website, letslearnthistogether.com for some courses or a book if you're interested in that, something that I just wrote. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.